back. We back. We back. Thank you, my podcast. We got our guest with us, Chul. Yes, Chul. Get that right. You know, I was going to say somebody said I was going to say somebody said her name. Yeah, we got Chul in the building. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, Thank you, my podcast. You know, know what? I think you have a little bit more black in you than Dr. Omar does. Yeah, yeah. What? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah, she's a real thinker. You know what I'm yeah. saying, and it's real interesting. I hope y'all checked out part one. Mm-hmm. If not, go back to part one for you watch this. For sure. um, Check it out. Like, subscribe, share, and all that type of stuff. But okay, so we got into what we left off at was the refugee camps, mm-hmm. um, resettlement, resettlement, um, going through the program mm-hmm. and everything that y'all could do and stuff like that. So for people who don't know. These refugee camps um, start in Africa, or are they here in America? No, they're all over. I mean, um, you can find camps. Do we have camps. Re- refugee camps here? We don't have any camps yeah, here. I don't think so, no. um, like, once you're here, yeah, you, you are no, no longer in that we know about. So, what's going on in wow. New York then that we see that so the it, news, the media is putting out there that there's these there's African refugee camps in New York. So and there's I, Again, with the way sanctuary cities work, I don't necessarily, they're not coining it refugee camps. That's what I'll say. That's not what they're coining it as. But there is a, to a degree, a form of refugee camp like, but that's not what they're coining it here in the United States. Right. But refugee camps are like all over, honestly. Um, We, we have camps in like, Folks from Myanmar going to uh, to Malaysia and, and different areas where they may not have like present day camps like like a, a UN type of system, but it may be like within the cities that they they have like these stipends, like these UN uh, different locations um, in Afghanistan. Right, the people are going to like neighboring countries to seek refuge. So I guess the whole notion is that you're seeking refuge in another country, not other than your host country, your home country. Right, but you do have camps oh. that are prevalent within Africa. So is it voluntary or is are you put in one? It is a voluntary fleeing, yeah, but right. not a voluntary act, right? Because you are fleeing because of persecution, um, because of war, famine. There well, are di- there could be different reasons why you are fleeing I your think home he's country. I'm asking more about when, whenever you flee, do you have to be in a refugee camp? Like whenever you flee from a war from a different na- nation, you go to a different nation. Mm-hmm. Do you get Put in a camp, or can you like find a way in our nation without living on a refugee camp? That's a really, really good question. So usually, when a person from an outside country comes into a, a new country, they're seen as an outsider. Yeah. So it's kind of like the the same concept of our southern border crisis, right? Where if no one has legal ID into the state. You 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 don't you can't get housing you can't get anything really you can't get a job so for them to be able to survive a lot of them will go through the UN through these camps so now they at least have like an ID through the camps some some countries will not let them work outside of camp so that's all that they can do is be in camp some will let refugees like work outside of camp just a little info um, I also was on a refugee camp. To Ghana, mm-hmm. it took a week for us to make it to the camp. You know, um, and one of the biggest now that camp, which is called Budu Brown Camp, mm-hmm. um, Budu Brown Camp, Budu Bur- oh. oh, I was like, what? Budu Bur- <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> I'm about to do what? Okay. Camp, you was like, okay, this is. I am. Wow. Okay, these don't run out of streets. Okay, on the US, okay. okay. different flavor camp. <laughs> You sounded a little like okay. Camp. I'm gonna yeah. stop. So, um, but um, <laughs> recently, <laughs> wow, wow, <laughs> I don't even know what the hell I'm, what the hell I'm even focused on. Exactly. <laughs> oh <laughs> wow. Come, 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 like, continue. Say, sorry. Say continue, continue because I'm saying the wrong part. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me say it over and over. 
Are you a what, what is it again? I'm the Buduburam camp. Oh, okay, all right. But um. some of these camps have different, uh, like yeah. weird names. Weird like, names, so right? the camp what that uh, my family came from is called Pinion Duke, and it, it sounds pretty funny, right? And then they have like Camp Joey. Like they have these ridiculous I name camps. Where that I don't know. Come from, but it's somewhere in Ghana. <laughs> And there are different area in the camp. And the, yes, something the, to that. Yes, so they call them blocks. In area U, right? Yeah. You got a whole alphabet. Yeah. Right. And mm-hmm. each one is a section of the camp that you get to live. Mm-hmm. We live in area U, but and I'm finished, right? in the comments, if anybody knows who's naming these camps, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Drop it, Max, drop it in the comments. Cause, cause I'm, I'm interested. Um, whose job is that? Yeah. Who dip name our camp? Yeah. Camp? I don't know. Maxie, do you want to be a part of that committee? <laughs> I will name the camp from now on. Yeah, that was the dating party yeah. names, right? Okay. Uh, Go ahead. But our camp mm-hmm. was just um, shut down, mm-hmm. and they literally had all took these everybody on yeah. the bus and shipped Sip them back to Liberia. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, they are like, y'all been here way too long. We have done our job. That, now, I'm saying this because America keep thinking that they have to house, you know, immigrants or refugees and, until and they die. And that's a sad that, part yes, of right? camps right now. You know, a lot of camps are wanting to close their doors, essentially. Yes. You are know? they making money? I mean, I mean, I mean, it's the UN. Sure it's the United, United yeah. Nations. So, or is it funded by the government? Like, is it no, no, it's a, well, it's an NGO. By the no, no, yeah. everything is either the government is making money, yeah. right? And the people, because let's be honest, most of these people at these camps are trying to come to the states. They are they are spending money. Every little, little bit of money they have, they, they have somebody that said, "Oh, this document called this as much. Come and fill this out." And people are spending thousands of dollars on these camps. Trying to come here, and guess what? Sometimes it doesn't work out. Yeah, some it's people bad. will be in camps for like decades. Like yes. I have some clients. I'll eventually like every when I'm processing folks or like when I'm having intakes with clients, I'll ask them like you know because I'm always curious, you know, thinking minds again, right? And I'll ask them like, how long did it take for you to be resettled? And some clients are like fifteen years. What is the what's the malfunction there? Like why is it? Just so it's just, it's just heavy traffic, and it's get like, like in the waiting congested. room, like it's like a lobby. You know, yeah. Like I, honestly, different factors. Honestly, like um, one could be like births. You know, because every year a child is born, or whenever a child is born, they have to be added to the case. You know, if someone dies, they have to be taken off the case, right? Um, I think. Um, I want to say that they're supposed to do like a check-ins or like, you know, checking on their cases, redoing their paperwork every five years, but sometimes it doesn't, right? I, I had a family who is Somalian coming from South Africa and all their documents, right? The, the children's pictures are when they were five, six, and seven. Yes. So it, it just all depends. Why would they keep bringing people in if they haven't even placed the people that are waiting? Wow. That's a really, really good question. Because that's above again, me. That's where it comes into, they are making way more money yeah, with so the people that are coming in. There's got to be something is, going on yeah. there. Than, than actually, like, and that's where it does come in. Because there, there's no, no way that you're saying, okay, we're trying to help people, but we have a hopeless field, a hospital field, and we have nobody to help, right? Nobody's being saved. But we just putting people in our hospital beds. Over and over. Yeah. That doesn't well, even and, and another I, I, thing I, I, is like, um, that like within the camps, I think there's there's like um one point last study that was done like one point three million that are like displaced all around the world, right? And the United States only uh, admits one percent of that number. So there's definitely a lot of refugees that just do not get um, like resettled and. You have folks like uh, Australia has like is one of the newer comers to resettlement, right? You have Canada who also does resettlement. You have different parts of Europe that also do resettlement, right? Someone once told me, I don't know if this is on the books on on record, but they do say a lot of times they look and see who is fit enough to come to the United States or or, or for resettlement that would be able to integrate yes. well into the, the, the society. That was another question I was going to ask you mm-hmm. when we cut out part one is you, you said something called cultural orientation. Yes. 
explain that. So cultural orientation is just pretty much overseas. They're supposed to have a form of cultural orientation where they're um, trying to let them know about not necessarily America, but about like the Western world. What are some customs in the Western world? What are some things that you do not do? They, they sometimes talk about credit score, which that's again, a new concept for them. A lot of us don't get that. Right. So, so they just kind (laughs) of tell them about certain things, like even like, uh, like, uh, going to the hospital, how would that be versus in camp and things like that. And then when they come to the United States or whatever respective place that they're going, we culture, we do another orientation to, like acquaint them to the laws and the customs of the said area. So we teach them about not only just the United States, but about Tennessee, right? Because that's where our office is located. Um, The office, uh, I think Catholic Charities is here in Bowling Green. So Catholic Charities would do the same thing and then also teach about Kentucky's laws and stuff like that. So we're, we're trying to assimilate them as best as we can because the goal of our programs is to reach self-sufficiency. What's the hardest part of your job? Um, when clients know English, it makes things a little easier, like for them to kind of understand. Not saying it makes the process any easier, but when they understand English, it, it gives them this, um, this sense of, okay, I know at least what you're saying. But when a client doesn't know English um, or all they know is camp, it makes it a lot more difficult because one, um, even using language lines, things just cannot be completely translated um, the the right way. Um, Prime example, I had this uh, one sweet lady. um, She was coming from, she's she's from Central Africa, um, but she was coming from a camp in Chad. And, it was very, very prevalent that she had never been outside of camp and it was her and her daughter. So she was a single mother. And when I picked her up from the airport, you can see the sense of, I don't know where I am. Overwhelming. Overwhelming. Yeah. And I'm just thinking like, okay, it's jet lag. You know, she's, she's really, really tired. So here we got her in a hotel and we're like, here's some food and uh, we'll visit you in the morning. And we, we left her a cell phone and she just was looking like, okay, I'm thinking she at least knows what a cell phone is, right? Come to find out, I went back the next day. I'm knocking on the door. She didn't know how to open the door. So I'm like, okay, well, how'd you lock the door? Uh, I'm sure it was a cultural wow. shock, right? And then uh, and then I finally tried to get on the line with language sign to be able to communicate. And then she does tell me through language line that she does not know how to work a phone. She didn't even know how to work a toilet. So it it took more more time for me to really really make sure that she knew how to work her cell phone, knew how to use the toilet, knew what the the stove head was and and, and things like that. And then going to the grocery store, that was a challenge too because it was like I'm, I told her like okay at this point having language line while like while we wait and things like that's not going to be able to work so i just want you to i'm going to walk you up and down the aisles and if you see something that looks familiar or that you want you point to it or just pick it up even that was very difficult because she just didn't know that where is she at now now she's in new york so i'm i'm guessing language line is an app yeah, that well, you use it's to- an app and it's also like a phone service um so we we dial in and and pretty much like this phone service has um like a network or like um contractors who speak multiple languages and pretty much you just like call the line you dial in your code and you're like oh i want french or i want um yeah, sango see, wait, or wait, you know you said that they have to call a line uh-huh. dial in their code you won't understand the dead difficulty of a person like in africa just that's more yeah. simpler yeah. than uh, any way else it's, you gotta dial a line that you don't know well, no numbers. Oh, you'll give her an iPad. All right. Eh? You'll give her an iPad. Oh, 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 Siri. No, Siri. No. And, 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 and I told a human being would be a great help. <laughs> How many well, human I beings mean, can God, do? Like, I mean, like translators. I yeah, I mean, some, not, like, yeah, sometimes it, it, it sometimes it's convenience, right? To be able to just dial this number in. 
But to have like a live that like that's our form of live interpretations yeah. because to have like a interpreter in person is very difficult because some of these clients that are coming we don't have their languages either represented in our office or speech. the yes, yes or the how dialects. many of you are there so in our office in Galton our office is newer so there's five of us in that office no it's probably not enough not definitely not enough oh, De- no. definitely okay. not enough. The, the, like right now so through the number that the the u.s gets right so the number for 2024 was 125,000 refugees and immigrants to come in folks who like uh, refugees and sivs to come into the united states that number is then divided to different like um affiliates and different resettlement agencies so our office in Nashville has a number, and then we in Gallatin, Tennessee, we have a number. Our number for our office is 160 individuals, right? So you can only imagine how quick we have to like turn around. So when clients don't speak English and also are not familiar with a self cell phone or the toilet it does like slow down so we have to like really yeah, really get down to like the e- country part of teaching mm-hmm. and it, it, mm-hmm. like and what you do is like it's admirable and but i just feel like that the it's not ran efficiently oh, but, but it does sound a lot more efficient than what like we said before what goes on at the border but mm-hmm. so there's a lot of stereotypes that go along with this too. And oh, I think yes. people are confused. Definitely. Like I said before, I feel like there's two or three different immigration systems in yeah. the country right mm-hmm. now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Most people ask me every time they hear that I'm an immigrant, they automatically assume like I'm here illegally. Yeah. Like that is the biggest as well. How do you live here? Then? Yeah. Like most people don't understand there are immigrants here that are here Legally. Legal means with like you can do just about everything as an American citizen except for this one thing mm-hmm. or these two, two things. And then some here that are like you can't really do anything yet until you get like these things. And then some people are here like I wasn't supposed to be here. Don't tell anybody that I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Like these are the type of and so but we are all for under this name immigrants. Yeah. We all fall under the name re- okay. refugees. And you have to take that time to explain to some people like yes. you know, why I'm here for. Yeah. It's not the same reason that that dude's like some of them are here and they are like political kids yeah. that yeah. are being hidden and they're like, Oh, I'm a refugee. You look at them, but they, in that country, they are like, You are like, Wait, you, your father run a country? Oh, yeah, he does. He just, but in America, I'm just a rare refugee. So, like, yes. what you have and to that's explain, another, yes, you have to explain yourself yeah. constantly. Like, I'm not what you see on TV. Yeah. What I'm not, not literally, I'm wor- working here, but I'm not taking a job illegally. I'm here legally. I have all the, like, you have to literally constantly. Yeah. Ask That's the, something we always have to communicate when we're talking to, because like a, a lot of the things we do, again, 90 days, when you talk about three months, that's not a lot. Yeah. And then when you talk about, you know, our, our cash assistance programs, again, those are, those are income based. So our programs can only go so far. So we all, we do a lot of networking and community engagement. And one of the things that we're always having to say is that this is legal like it's it's legal immigration like we we everyone all of our clientele are legals now there are some clients who need services that you know may have came to the united states at illegal means and that's where our immigration department comes and tries to see like okay well what type of paperwork do you have can we get you an asylum you know things like that but the bulk of our program is legal immigration well and i feel like there might be some people here that are here illegally Mm -hmm. but not maliciously like it sounds like that there's there's so many processes and there's so many stages i might have decided to come to america one day and then got lost in the sauce so i'm here you know what i'm saying but Mm -hmm. because of my paperwork might have got jammed up somewhere or i didn't do this step or that step so I'm technically here illegally, yeah, but I yeah. started out, you yeah. know what I'm saying, right. with the right intentions. With the right intentions, yeah. 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 And, no, no. Yeah. and two, like the, the picture, like we talked about it, the, the picture that they paint, automatically when somebody says uh, uh, immigrant, mm-hmm. we automatically think of uh, uh, a Mexican or something like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the first thing that pops in your head, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, like. 
As an immigrant, it's, he's like, it's oh, it's this the media, the propaganda, you know, that, that's being fed to the American people, right? Because we have, oh, we have the southern border crisis. It is a crisis. It really is, you know, and that is why. Uh, Central America right now, Latin America rather, is is they're trying to come up with like UN uh, resettlement uh, processing centers so they can give them a legal means to the United States. Before That's, they get before here. Before they get yeah. here. That's actually what they're doing in uh, Colombia right now. There's a lot of uh, Venezuelan refugees that are coming through our programs right now, actually. Uh, the the My last couple of cases were from Venezuela. So they are trying yeah. to give them legal means, but that takes so long, and, it, and it's not again solving the, the the crisis that we have in the southern border and also it's not just spanish speaking folks that are coming through the southern yeah. border it's People not just using those nations mm -hmm. yeah. those places as like as like 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 i said hey you want to go to america go to me me mexico, mexico. yeah it, it must be e easier than yeah. it, yeah. it is that you're doing it for africa yeah and like we talked about fine 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 finding that out like oh you know what I've been trying here. If yeah. I just find a boat to take me down there, maybe I can try it. I can do yeah. the same thing I'm doing here, but from that place down there. Might, that, that <laughs> and, and that's another reason why um, in, in media right now we're seeing that we're having an issue of folks coming through the southern border. Now you have um, – States like New York and Colorado, who are sanctuary states, even um, a little bit of Texas in some degree, Kentucky. and uh, California, right, and Kentucky, right, that are sanctuaries for these folks. But again, this is temporary. A lot of them, they ship back to the southern border. So it, it, it becomes this revolving door. Really? Right? Really? What do you mean a lot of them ship back? Some of them they do send back uh, at at, at like some that. point. Insane. They don't say that, yeah, they, right? But some they, of them. They don't say that. So um, we just had like an experience where um, we had a minor actually come through the southern border, and then she was being processed in in California, and it was either to send her back or try to figure out where to place her. Luckily, we found out that she, they found out that she had a parent here in, in Tennessee. Well, in, in Tennessee, so that's what they ended up doing. But she's still illegal, technically. You know, she doesn't have the paperwork. So right now, we're, that's one thing that we're, we're trying to figure out is like what agencies can help her since she does technically have a parent that is legally here in the United States. Let me ask you, um, are there a lot of donors to you? Agency? Yes, we uh, have like some. Yes, we have some private and then some like uh, governmental, um, right? Um, can you tell me which which base of people here donate more to to refugees than like when you like say when base, you, like private, private race, donors? Race, race, race right. Who do you think donate? Who, I who mean. <laughs> I don't want to. That's I'm a American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you, a pointed question. <laughs> I, I'm getting to a point here. I'm yeah. getting. I'm trying to. Do, do you, because no, I live in foster care here, and I one, yeah. one, 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 one point whenever I realized that we were getting donations yeah. from our okay, there came a year that the do, donation came in less. It came less money, 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 money. There was yeah. le less money for, for us to get yeah. what we usually do. And so then the question that came up, come up well, who usually donate yeah. Yeah. to our cause? And then that's when I found out. That? out that yeah, yeah, come on now. <laughs> At this point, you. That's when I found out that in Kentucky, people have more money comes through if Republican wins, right? If Republican wins, the state automatically gets white or money. black. Oh. White, of course, white. <laughs> okay, if, so. if Republican wins, because they are white, obviously, black boy are the Democrat. Yeah. If Republican wins, we get more money, right? And if, and that year was Obama won. Yeah. And we got more, less gifts. We got less everything. Less yeah. money, less vacation. And I was like, what happened? Hey, we, disclaimer though, happen. we don't endorse identity politics. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. I mean, right. Come on. Yeah. 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 We're not doing identity. I'm telling you. <laughs> Where the money comes from, well, I, who is in charge? I'm talking about. I can't confirm nor deny yeah. <laughs> where. And, 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 and let me say this: Do you think more refugees get more visa when a Democrat wins, or will more refugees get more visa when? Well, Republicans? The, the only thing that I can say that is factual is that um, when the Republicans were in office, 
there were less refugees coming. So the numbers were like way lesser, yes. right? And now that a Democratic is in office, the numbers are exceedingly higher, higher. than they yes. have ever been yes. this year. Yes. So right now, because it's election year, there are some fears that if it is a Republican in office, that our numbers may well, go no. back down. Yeah. Yeah, that so I can say that, that factually. A lot, I guess, Why do you think that future? is? Well, I will say um, can I when on that first you, oh, at, let me say no, my no, statement no, and then no, you no, give no, your no. opinion. I will say that um, during the um, Republican era, um, there was a lot of fear behind immigration, legal or illegal. I mean, <laughs> legal or illegal. And I think that that created that that fear. And then also, you know, there was a, a lot of a lot of. Um, presidential like uh, like what what's the word no i don't want to say veto but like um a lot of for a lot of muslim countries right there was a, a lot of like bands band yes. right yes. and refugees that we get refugees from all over and a lot of them do tend to be uh, is like from islamic countries so that also decreased the numbers and, and we were seeing a lot more either like elderly or like sick elderly or folks who needed care in the United so, States. We always hear the media, the right wing conservative media mm -hmm. is going to tell you that the Democrats want to bring in all these immigrants right. and refugees because mm -hmm. they want them to vote. Right. Blue, right. right. Uh, do most of these people coming in, they probably don't even really have a concept of Republican Democrat. No. Right. I mean, that's <laughs> probably like the farthest thing from their mind. Right. Right. How, I mean, is that, even feasible that all these people will come in and just go vote but, Democrat. no they cannot uh, okay right um, they cannot i'm not saying that within like can. their documentation yeah limits i think if they even if they could the stereotype of the democrat gets more comes with the fact that when we come here the democratic party is quote unquote considered the black party yeah in america mostly right okay it makes you if you come from out knowing that he will look at me like we are bro brother we look alike mm -hmm. it give you that like identity crisis of like oh i have to go with where this group. all right, right he let me in so i gotta yeah. vote for, you know i'm, yeah. I'm with yeah, him I, let I, me I, in. I, I, I can uh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but I, 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 I would say this here yeah. and i do not understand why an african ever vote democrat because back home we are all republican mindsets I mean, we, we not, a lot I, of African are, nations are, are very yeah. conservative. I can see, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Very, very yeah. conservative. But if somebody does a favor yeah. for you, mm -hmm. even being an African or whatever, then you feel like it's your well, duty it to. But if no, they're trying to, it become, it become that guilt. It become that like if you're not voting mm. for me, you will, you you and black. It is not if you're voting for me, you may get a better success of life. Something here. If you vote for for the other party, like you ask, why is it that uh, um, Democrats? allow more in than Republican. And my theory on that is, is Republican has always been the mindset of America first. American citizen first. Make sure that our home, homeless are all gone first. Make sure that our issue are solved first, right? So whenever a Republican get in office, jobs have to be here. Mm -hmm. We gotta make sure that, in, that before we employ even the refugees here, mm -hmm. we gotta employ those that don't have jobs here. Mm -hmm. Our people then have been complaining. They focus on that, right? Mm -hmm. And that kind of shut the doors on like other people that do want it. It I, does, right? It does with that man. It's not like a, oh, we don't like them. Is they focus on solving the problem problem here that in we the have US. At home, right? I can more than here versus the ten ten democrat want me to succeed. Mm -hmm. But the help they give me is oh, we we are bringing you here. Go go ahead and just find out what it means that you can and make it here. Mm -hmm. But make make sure that you kind of pay us back, or you kind of vote for us, or you kind of help us get our win. Like in that aspect, I don't think a Republican need us to ever win because they always know they got the patriots. I, I think are, are, are you're 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 leading towards like conspiracy. Yeah, and see to me, and see to me, yeah. see to me Disclaimer. they all working together. And so when yeah, it, you think Repub you think doors, Republicans want to fix the border right now? Right. Yeah. But, Hell no. but, yeah, but it's all to me. They're all working together. So right now, a Republican yeah. Democrat ain't even a thing. A it's thing. something to steer us yeah. different ways yeah. and separate us. Mm -hmm. 
just like race. Yeah. We all just said like we're black mm-hmm. and they're white. Yeah. Then it's easy to it's determine. It's easy that. to determine, right? But right, to right. say like you're African and I'm African American, then that makes us separate. Well, what's crazy is is there's people in this country, there's citizens that like hate America, and then she's got people that want to come in and actually be American. Be American. Yeah. So why can't we just swap them out? <laughs> well, <laughs> right? Because, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know. America, what? right? Those that hate America have a different idea of the America that they want. They that. And the idea is not to go to Liberia and we'll start that America idea there. You know, it's almost like a, right. a looking glass, right? You got you have some folks who are within, like you know, and then you have some outsiders, people looking at it, and it's like you know, folks from like these different abroad countries are looking at our looking glass, and America paints a great picture, right? We're like home of the free, you know, you can uh, the American dream mm-hmm. and all of that. Well, that's what they're seeing. So we, right. they're not seeing what is actually happening in America. In America they're just right. seeing this 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 dream, this picture that America has painted so beautifully, right? But then the folks in in within the United States are like, I mean, there's police brutality, that X, Y, yeah. and Z things like that, and that's not what they're seeing. And also here, what we're being shown, like men, mental talk all the time mm-hmm. because I, I like to know about what's going on in Africa, right. you know, and stuff. And I'm like, damn, what they show us is like it's, little kids with flies on them and stuff like that. <laughs> right. Like, it's beautiful places there. Yeah. Like, you know, McDonald's, there's yeah. different stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's crazy how much control that they Media. have from the top. Yeah, yeah. And, like, even with the immigration stuff mm-hmm. like that, like, we don't know nothing but what they tell us. And then, because it's not taught in school, it's not yeah, just a taught. Number. Yeah, like so, she like. She is right. We have become. So every one of them they mm-hmm. put it in charge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A number that is able to bring them some other number. Some, yeah. yeah. Some, something whether other. it be taxpayers, yes. whether it be always voters. An agenda. It's time. always an agenda. <laughs> Usually, I mean, and they used always to, an agenda. Trump was right. And they used to draft the best. Like, you come on my team. Now it's like, I got 20 people on my team. Yeah. But they might be all dumb. <laughs> But I got 20 people on my team now. <laughs> like, that's what they're doing. They are just accumulating num- n- n- numbers. Not yeah. care, carry, carry anymore. Yeah. Whether or not that number is saying yeah. or insane. Yeah. They don't care. It's, hey, look. It's all business. Yeah. yeah. First. It used mm-hmm. to be America. Care for America. Care for, like, in order to become a citizen here, you used to have to go take a test. You, so I mean, like, like it used to be like a even a police language. officer you used to have used to take to a like, test. You wanted to be a lawyer. <laughs> what are you talking about? It used to be like a lawyer thing. Yeah. You used yeah. to have to go through studies. Yeah, stuff. I'm telling now, you, I tell the, people, they are going to pay me one day to be a citizen. They will beg me like, man, to give I'm t- me this amount of money, please. The citizenship, the citizenship, the citizenship test used to be like the most. Like hardest like thing that. ever. And, and, now and they're so just like college. they're probably asked like two questions, and, and you're like, "Oh, yeah. you're Dude, good." You walk, <laughs> America, can you walk? <laughs> you walk. You in, good? Listen, yeah. I walk in there with my baby, baby wearing this. They would say, "Don't even worry, you already yeah. said it." <laughs> 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 it is, bro. Yeah. I mean, it, it, to me, it, that's yeah. how it, it is now. It has gone into the point that wanting to be a part of America to to me was literally like a big goal. It was like to to be able to be a citizen here was like a. A dream of like you know you gotta work hard you gotta be a good human. Look, look at the videos like, from back then, like of uh, like tickets. folks who were um, like when they're um, being like doing their oath of citizenship. You would see folks crying. crying bro. I Cry. mean, like the patriotism was like yes. this is the greatest accomplishment I could ever make in my life. Now you right? have to pay now me. it's have, like have you me. ever have you ever I'm seen have you ever settled anybody that did have that gratitude? That you saw? Yes. The If not, I'll, I'll, I'll say 99.9 of my clients are, um, like, they, they are so honored to be here in the U.S. Um, I've had one client said um, that U.S. is safety for them, right? They don't have to, like, watch behind their back what's happening, right? Because they came from a war zone, right? They, her and her children actively remember, like, like, having to go to shelters and and, and bombs are, are above their heads and stuff like that. So for them, it was safety. Here in the U.S., they have safety. Another client was like, my son, I thought he had like a speech problem. Like he wasn't speaking. And it was because even in his young age, he was depressed, you know, because he was not accepted in their host country, right? And now she can't get him to stop talking, right? So it, 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 it's a sense of, 
I feel hope at free. Relief. Hope, yes, hope. Yeah, hope. Yeah, yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. And uh, before we wrap this up, too, what I want to say um, with I your job, you mm-hmm. I know your job. We talked about the hardest thing about your job, but I would think it would be being emotionally attached to some of these. <laughs> people like you have to be y'all like, haven't really like you know got to know me but i'm a very yeah. outgoing person and I'm, I'm very cheerful and very optimistic so it, it sometimes i have to like step back a little bit because i, I get so attached and like you know i feel so connected with my clients because you know coming as a former refugee myself like i know their struggles i know their story so it is for me it's very hard to not get attached Does you know especially when biased? i hear successes me of clients uh, does that make you biased sometimes of having to make sure that they get what it needs to get, even though some, some, some. Because if you tell them something wrong, yeah. it's like, like your, fo- you know what I'm saying? That's yeah, a lot of But money. you're supposed to want them to win, though. Exactly. You're supposed I'm, to want I'm, them to win. I'm more like a cheerleader. Like, I'm rooting for them to win, and I will tell them my story, too. I'm like, hey, look, I came as a refugee, and, and I was, at, you can make it. You know, I, that's what I try to, instill into my clients that you can make it like you know it's it's possible that's what i try to instill now is it easy no because there's some folks who are never going to understand it and they they have lived in camp all their lives to where camp they didn't have to do anything there was no working right there's no jobs in the camps so they they feel like america is a handout you know they feel like Mm. there should be a handout for everything so some of those clients it's kind of hard to you know get them like mobilized and like energized to to live the american dream um but when they get it they get it you know have you met a client that was disappointed in america yes (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Him and they were like, like nah. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like he's every day. He's like calling. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm right here. <laughs> Twenty years, and I've been here. Like it's you know. It's, my, no, let me tell you the truth. Yeah. When I was in the plane, mm-hmm. they said the captain came over and said, "Hey, everybody, fast enough, we're gonna be landing in America in fifteen min- minutes." Yeah. And I was like, "Excuse me." <laughs> How do I go back? <laughs> no, what does it mean by we landing in America? Yeah. And she was like, we're going to land the plane. Yeah. And I was like, the plane's going to touch ground. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm like, America's on the ground. Yeah. Say, so, yeah. I was like, no, it's already wrong. <laughs> if it's yeah. not in the sky and it's on the ground, it's already messed up. Yeah. It's already there. So yeah. <laughs> that's my first day as a point 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 woman when, yeah. when I first got out of here. We got to get ready to wrap this up. Thank you, yeah. Minds Podcast. For the people that's watching, mm-hmm. if they need any help with anything or anything, can they follow you? Can they reach you? Or should they just go through the process? Or what's the Definitely. If it's anything uh, specifically about, like, uh, refugees, the legal immigration system, definitely um, we have a couple different resettlement agencies within the area. We have in Nashville, Tennessee, we have NICE. N- NICE stands for Nashville International Center for for empowerment i believe here in bowling green we have catholic charities so those are some agencies that you can get with um and and if you're like a walk-in immigrant yes you can like we we have a whole immigration team that that deals with things like that like you know making sure that everyone has their legal documentation and and making sure those are right so we have a website it's empower nashville.com um um if you ever want to connect with me personally, you can either uh, reach me at my socials using my name, Chul, C-H-O-L, Rambang, R-A-M-B-A-N-G. So Chul Rambang. Um, but yeah, and on our website, you can like go to the different links. We, we have a lot of different things that we, we post and things like that. We also have uh, social medias for our organization, which is Empower Nashville. That is how you can find us. That's cool. And I'll leave everything in the uh, description also. Y'all can check that out. Hit some of them links. Check it out. Uh, this is Thinking Minds Podcast. Mm-hmm. We appreciate continue. you coming through, man. man. Yeah. Like, this was... This was great. I, I really so. enjoyed it. Like, awesome. this, this was great Most dialogue. Definitely. And y'all be seeing her again. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Right, more Stay tuned. Stay yeah, tuned. We, <laughs> we have not even talked about, you know, what it's like to be us. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 I would yeah, love yeah. to have that conversation. I, I'm, yeah, Cause, cause, I'm cause, you know, there's a difference between West Africa and East Africa. We don't want to, like, try to get into Jolof Rice Wars or anything yeah. like that. Oh, <laughs> but yeah. but there's definitely... That's the inside. That's the inside. 
How many meat is in your jollof rice? Yeah. First of all, we don't necessarily have jollof rice, so that's the first okay, thing. That's, down. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we have so many other dishes in oh, East oh, Africa. Oh, we. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, rice, I'm not saying I'm not saying that our food are better, but you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, tell the people what they need to do, man. Uh, if you like this, y'all, go ahead and like and subscribe and follow us on Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. It's your boy Mental B. All right, we out of here. Yes. Thank you, my podcast.